if I said this once on my Twitter page, I've said this a thousand times. Vitek Vanacek for Vesna, and I'm going to make a case for him because I think it's the appropriate time to do so because the Devils shut out the Chicago Blackhawks three to nothing. Lots to talk about in today's episode of Locked on Devils. Buckle up, everybody. You're Locked on Devils, your daily podcast on the New Jersey Devils, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, this is Bryce Salvador, and you're Locked on Devils with Trey Matthews. Elias scores! Oh, Steven stepped up, nailed him. Rodor has got the puck. What a shot. The Devils win the Stanley Cup. All righty now. What is up, New Jersey? Welcome back to the Locked on Devils podcast. You're on Locked on Network. I'm your host, college hockey play by play announcer, and also Devils right for Pucks and Pitchforks, Trey Matthews. So, for the first time since December of 1999, the New Jersey Devils have shut out the Chicago Blackhawks, and they came out on the winning end by a score of three to nothing. They're currently on a six game point streak. And what am I going to be talking about in today's episode? Well, obviously, I'm going to give my initial reactions to the game, what I saw, what I liked, what I didn't like. And then uh, the main talking point of today's episode is going to be Vitek Vancheck. I feel as though it's now an appropriate time to do so since Vitek Vancheck came away with the shutout victory. He was the first star of the game. And I just want to dive into that topic a little bit. Uh, it's something I'm definitely going to revisit later on in the year. So fingers crossed that Vitek Vancheck continues his dominance in between the pipes. And then I'm going to give you guys the final stats and I'll give you my letter grade for the game for New Jersey Devils. So my initial reactions for the Devils going into this game was that I think this is the perfect opportunity for them to fix what they've been lacking. So they've acknowledged this on air, but I, I I think the last few games for Devils have certainly been somewhat of a struggle. So in their game against the New York Rangers, despite coming out on the winning end by a score of five to three, they gave up the first two goals of the game within like a minute or two span. And so that was definitely an area of concern. Then obviously a, a, the game against the National Predators, a game that they deserved to lose. Luckily, they were able to walk away with something in OT. We saw the New Jersey Devils only play like two and a half good minutes of hockey, and that's when they were able to score three unanswered goals in period number two. But for the rest of that game, they just played leisurely. They looked a little lethargic, and they, did, they didn't have that same sense of urgency uh, especially in their final final power play in which they should have been aiming for that extra insurance goal. And thus the Nashville Predators were able to tie it, send it to OT and then come away with the win. And then in their game against the Philadelphia Flyers, literally a team that's coming off a lengthy losing streak. It, that's a game that the New Jersey Devils should have dominated from start to finish, but they let the Flyers hang around and it was an ugly win. So at least they walked away with the win. At least they didn't give the Flyers the, the W. But at the same time, the New Jersey Devils know that they are so much better than what they performed against the Philadelphia Flyers. So I felt as though this game against the Chicago Blackhawks is a perfect opportunity for them to redeem themselves and possibly come away with the win. I try to refrain from saying like guaranteed victory, but the, let's face it, the Chicago Blackhawks are last in the Central. So if they're going to tune things, that's the game to do so because the schedule for the Devils is going to be a little difficult because you got the New York Islanders game, which the game I'm going to be in the press box as a credentialed media member for the Devils if you missed yesterday's episode. Then you got the New York Rangers once again. You got the Dallas Stars, Philadelphia Flyers not too worried about, but then you got the Panthers, you got the Hurricanes, then you got the Boston Bruins for two straight games on December 23rd and December 28th. So this month of December is definitely going to be a true challenge for New Jersey Devils and something that I've been talking about in previous episodes, which is I'm excited to see how the Devils match up against a team like the Boston Bruins, a team that's also atop of the NHL standings or the Carolina Hurricanes or the New York Islanders once again, because we haven't played the Carolina Hurricanes yet, but the New York Islanders, we faced them early on in this year, but let's face it, the New York Islanders, they've exceeded my expectations, and I think I'm not alone in that. So I'm excited to see how the New York Islanders, once again, stack up against the New Jersey Devils. So that should be an interesting matchup. So this was the game for the Devils to just tune things up, and they did. So as the game progressed, they got a little bit better. So in period number one, Yes, the New Jersey Devils scored first. And by the way, let's just talk about that quickly because, yes, we could talk about Dougie Hamilton scoring, but Jack Hughes taking on four defenders for the Chicago Blackhawks. Like he had four skaters in front of him, but yet somehow, some way was able to bob and weave through traffic, find Dougie Hamilton, and find the back of the net. So while Dougie Hamilton's goal was great, I think the assist really took the cake for me. So Jack Hughes continuing his uh, – 
fire streak of great production for New Jersey Devils. And you just love to see it from someone like Jack Hughes, who's our franchise player. And they also acknowledge this during the MSG broadcast, which is Jack Hughes somehow, some way, always performs uh, best against the Chicago Blackhawks. So this was definitely a good game for Jack Hughes. And you just saw him maneuver through traffic. You just saw him act like a, a wizard with a puck. So uh, one of the, yes, Vitek Vanacek was impressive. But remember, Jack Hughes, during the course of this game, his razzle-dazzle, it was amazing to see. And I just love to see that from Jack Hughes. So digressing a little bit, towards the end of period number one, the Chicago Blackhawks got eight shots on goal on the on Vitek Vanacek. And then in period number two, like halfway through, I think they had 16 shots at go- on goal at that point. So uh, the Devils were able to tune it up, especially in period number three, because I believe they held the Chicago Blackhawks to under five shots on goal during the final period of regulation. So I love that the New Jersey Devils didn't take their foot off the gas pedal and they just were determined to shut out the Chicago Blackhawks because, like I just mentioned, guys, halfway through period number two, the Blackhawks had 16 shots on goal or somewhere in that ballpark, and they finished the game with 24 shots on goal. So I love to see that from uh, the New Jersey Devils and also their big three just coming into play once again because – We talked about Hughes' assist, but Dougie Hamilton was able to score. Dougie Hamilton is another vital component of this roster, and Dougie Hamilton walked away with three points in this game. So he was able to score, like I just mentioned, but the other two goals that were scored by Nico Heischer and Jesper Bratt, Dougie Hamilton got the secondary assist. And I feel as though Dougie Hamilton, despite being one of our main components on the roster, and I know he's not a part of the big three, but I just wanted to give him a shout-out, Dougie Hamilton in 26 game appearances has 19 points and he has a plus minus of plus 15. We talked about how this year could be a comeback year for Dougie Hamilton because last year he dealt with uh, the facial fracture surgery that sidelined him for a couple months. So it's great to see that Dougie Hamilton, who we had high expectations when we first signed him, it's nice to see that he is not skipping a beat and he is being that Norris caliber player that we know that he was capable of doing. So just wanted to give a shout out to Dougie Hamilton because I feel as though he's one of our star players that falls underneath the radar. Then let's uh, move on to Nico Kiescher. Jonas Siegethaler, great setup to, to find Nico Kiescher, but Nico Kiescher is just relentless because he had like two opportunities to try and score before finally finding the back of the net. And this all happened in the same possession. At first, when you don't succeed, try, try again. And Nico Kiescher, uh, I believe it was either the second or third time he was able to finally uh, score the goal. And that I just love the relentlessness from Nico Heischer. And then on the power play opportunity, just beautiful setup by Hughes once again to Jesper Bratt. And Bratt was able to score. So our big three contributing in more ways than one. Now, uh, my buddy, the Brad Pack, actually tweeted this out. So we're going to react to a tweet once again. The New Jersey Devils have three players above a point per game through 25 games into the season. For the first time since the 1956 New Jersey Devils who played in the Continental Hockey League. So our baby big three, I don't think I can no longer call them our baby big three because they have taken leaps and bounds of just showing improvement. So this is what I want to see from them, just taking charge and taking lead. Because going into this game, I think the Devils are still trying to figure out, like, how do they replace Nathan Bastion? And I get it that the average hockey fan and maybe the uh, casual Devils fan – probably doesn't understand what Nathan Bastion brings to the team because, yes, he's not the best player on the roster, but he certainly has that sort of impact. And when you have to shuffle up the lines, when you have to move Fabian Zetterlin to a different line, when you have to insert Alexander Holtz and try to give him a vital role into the offense, it could definitely put a hinder on things, especially since the Devils have been in a groove. But at the same time, I think they're starting to figure it out, and that's what I want to see from our leaders. So overall, when looking at this game, the game just got better for the New Jersey Devils as it progressed. And that's what I want to see because I think that's what they've been struggling the last few games. And uh, also I believe Can Danico said it on air because you saw the New Jersey Devils just getting back to what they were doing uh, so well, just like a week or two ago, which is playing with speed, playing with urgency and just trying to put the game to bed early. So scoring first, maintaining that lead and just playing uh, the whole uh, the whole game, just not letting up. So yes, period number one, they allowed uh, more shots on goal than I'm sure they wanted to. I'm sure the same could be said halfway through period number two, but from uh, towards the end of period number two and throughout period number three, the Devils improved and they were determined 
to keep uh, the Chicago Blackhawks from scoring. So that's what I want to see going forward, especially since the scheduling is going to get a little more difficult for them. Now, we're going to move on to VTech Vanacek because a lot of people might write VTech Vanacek off for a possible Vesna trophy winner, but I'm going to make a case for him. So what's my case going to be? Well, we'll talk about that momentarily, but first I want to bring you guys uh, hip to bet online because I want to see you guys make some extra cash this holiday season. So betonline.net is your number one source for all your sport betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get all the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there from football to basketball to soccer and esports. We've got it for you at betonline.net. If you love sports podcasts, you can find those at betonline as well. They're always the fastest, easy way to get all your betting fix. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. BetOnline, where the game starts. Please remember to gamble responsibly and visit our friends at Locked On Bets for all your betting needs there as well. So the main star in this game was Vitek Vanacek because he came away with a shutout. And once again, he was making a lot of grade A saves. And I think a, a lot of hockey fans, and I, I think a decent amount of Devils fans, believe that Vitek Vanacek doesn't have a legitimate shot of winning the Vezda Trophy because, let's face it, Vitek Vanacek, he is the underdog in this case. I'm sure if, if Vitek Vanacek were to hypothetically win, it would be the most out-of-left-field winner in recent memory to win the Vezda Trophy because I am I guarantee you nobody, including me, was projecting for Vitek Vanacek to be this good and possibly have his name in the running for the Vezna Trophy. But I'm going to make a case for him because I think Vitek Vanacek deserves a lot more respect in terms of just uh, having a legitimate case of possibly winning the Vezna Trophy because I saw the top three uh, favorites to win it not too long ago uh, when the NHL posted about it. And I think Vitek Vanacek, he has a legitimate case as to why he should at least as the season progresses, be considered for the top three. So when looking at the MVP award for any sport, it's not just hockey. So we can look at the Hart Memorial Trophy. We can look at the Norris Trophy. We can look at, uh, like we're doing right now, the Vesna Trophy or outside of hockey. We can look at the MVP for basketball or, or baseball, whatever the case might be. It's a very political award, as in usually the best player doesn't get it. So in the NBA, uh, I'm a big LeBron James fan, and you can you can make the argument saying that maybe LeBron James should win it every single year. Or in hockey, Connor McDavid is head and above shoulders, one of the best to ever play the game, and he he's definitely he brings a lot to the table, and he statistically is always great. But yet he can't win the Hart Memorial Trophy every single year. That's not how it works. It's a very political award like that that's just how mvp awards are so i broke it down to three categories so value stats and i think the most important thing is narrative like what's the narrative for this player to win the mvp because everyone loves a good story that's how you differentiate your uh competition so i think the narrative is the most important factor to any mvp award so let's start with value how valuable is vtech vancheck to the New Jersey Devils. And the no duh answer is he is extremely valuable because when Mackenzie Blackwood, and this is something we're going to talk about momentarily as well, when Mackenzie Blackwood went down with his MCL sprain, who was the one who stepped up to the plate? Now, Vitek Vancheck was already having a good year, but he was able to take it to new heights once he was thrusted into a bigger role. And it was something I was a little concerned about because I was like, is Vitek Vancheck ready to be the full blown starter for the New Jersey Devils? Because Last year for the Washington Capitals, uh, he appeared in 41 games, but now he is going to be starting a majority of those games, not half of the games for the New Jersey Devils, a majority of them. So I was just a, I was just a little hesitant at first, but I knew like, look, Vitek Vanacek, he's young. I'm sure he can adjust on a fly, and I think he is definitely going to showcase what he's capable of doing. And quite honestly, he earned my trust just based on what he was doing before Mackenzie Blackwood got her. So Vitek Vanacek is extremely valuable to the New Jersey Devils roster, and I'm going to add his clutchness as well, because like I just said early on in the episode, and this applies to a lot of other games, there have been so many times this season where the New Jersey Devils really could have screwed themselves and they had some defensive lapses, whatever the case might be. But who was making those grade A point blank saves? 
it was Vitek Vanacek. And I, I've tweeted about it so much to the point where my phone basically has not memorized as to what I'm going to say. So when I type in Vitek all caps, it, it already fills in what I'm going to say, like Vitek Vanacek is clutch or Vitek Vanacek for Vesna. Because Vitek Vanacek this season, he has shown that he is a very clutch goalie for New Jersey Devils. And there have been so many games where it could have gone the wayside for the Devils, but it's Vitek Vanacek in between the pipes making those big saves for New Jersey Devils. So I remember not too long ago when the Brad Pack and Jersey Joe appeared on the show, we talked about how Nico Heischer, what uh, made him just that much better of a player was his clutchness. And I think the same can be said for Vitek Vanacek, just a clutch player overall who has stepped up to the plate in the big moment. So Vitek Vanacek is extremely valuable to the New Jersey Devils roster, and they do not go on that 13-game win streak without Vitek Vanacek and his services. They don't go on that 13-game win streak with a lot of players, but I think the the one of the top five players would have to be Vitek Vanacek. So you have to credit our baby big three and Heischer, Hughes, and Brat, and then you got to put Vitek Vanacek at number four, I believe, and then for number five, you could put what you could like put someone like Dougie Hamilton, or I wouldn't call you crazy if you put like one of the members of the BMW line, whatever the case might be. Vitek Vanacek is a top five player on the Devils roster, and the Devils aren't in this position without his services. And we saw this in the game against the Chicago Blackhawks once again, which was Vitek Vanacek making big save after big save, and thus he walks away with the shutout. Now, Here's something that might go against Vitek Vanacek, and that's his overall stats. Because Vitek Vanacek, uh, a, a lot of people are going to be very fickety about uh, the statistical uh, um, overalls for Vitek Vanacek. But I think he has done an excellent job statistical-wise for the Devils because in uh, 17 game appearances, he has a record of 12-2-1. He has a goals against average of 2.1 and a save percentage of 922. Now, here's something that my colleagues over at Locked On have been bringing up, which is you got to look at his GSAA, which is goal saved above average. Now, this isn't updated on hockey reference because they haven't factored in the game against the uh, Chicago Blackhawks yet. But coming into the game against the Blackhawks, he had a GSAA of 5.3. So if, for anyone who who doesn't know anything about that type of statistical analysis for a goalie, it's the goals this goalie prevented given his save percentage and shot space versus the league average save percentage on the same numbers of shots, minimum four shots space per team game needed to qualify. So uh, his his GSAA is pretty high, five point three, which is which is good. So I know Alex Shavansi has tweeted this out multiple times, but his goals expected average is actually astonishingly really good because a lot of people expected for beat tech man check to just be letting up a, a handful of goals or a decent amount of goals, but he's proven a lot of people wrong. So the stats, while they might not be the most, the more impressive stats compared to some other Vezda candidates, I think V tech man check still has a legitimate case in that sort of regards. And now the big one is narrative because like I said, Everyone loves a good story when choosing the MVP. And this is what makes it political. I'm not saying it's good. I'm not saying it's bad. But at the same time, like, this is one of the reasons why the usually the best player doesn't win it in any league every single season because the narrative remains the same. They're the best player. They're supposed to do this. Like, what's their story? Well, here's the story for VTech Vanacek. When we first acquired VTech Vanacek, a lot of people were just like, uh, just like, oh, yeah, whatever. Because here's the thing about Vitek Vanacek. I'm sure a lot of people are questioning, like, why did the Washington Capitals trade away Vitek Vanacek for a second and third round pick in that year's uh, NHL draft? So the 2022 NHL draft. And my educated guess is that despite Vitek Vanacek having a solid regular season performance because he had a record of 20 and 12, he had a goal against average of 2.67 and a save percentage of 908, Given how bad the New Jersey Devils' goalie situation was last year, we we could have used someone like him last year. And despite him not even going to be like sniffing Vesna uh, votes in that sort of aspect, the Devils' record would have been a lot better had he been on the roster last year with those same stats. So digressing a little bit, why did the Washington Capitals give up on Vitek Vancheck? Well, here's his playoff stats. Two game appearances. He had a record of 1-1, one and one, a goals against average of 4.21, and a save percentage of 863. And if you need uh, some better reference, during the 2021 playoffs, he appeared in one game. 
He had a goals against average of 4.56 and a save percentage of 750. So here's the thing, guys. The playoffs is really where you seal your legacy. So you can have a very good regular season, but it, it, it doesn't mean anything if you don't perform well in the playoffs. And I think that's what uh, went against Vitek Vancek against the Washington Capitals. I think that's what a lot of Capitals fans remember Vitek Vancek for because, like I said, it doesn't matter what you do in the regular season. If you don't perform in the playoffs – that's going to make or break you. So I think that's why the Washington Capitals gave up on Vitek Vancek. And it's something I talked about during the course of the all season for a silly season episode in which I said, maybe the New Jersey Devils could go after Vitek Vancek, despite him being a restricted free agent. I said, one of the concerns I have for Vancek is that he is not good during the course of the playoffs. He's good during the regular season, but during the course of the playoffs is where I just uh, ponder and I scratch my head. But uh, we'll, we'll worry about that when, when we get to the playoffs. So like if VTech Vanacek crashes and burns once again in the playoffs, I'm sure we'll be uh, seeing a different tune. I hope not, but that's, that's way down the line. Now, focusing on the now, VTech Vanacek, when he was first acquired by the New Jersey Devils, a lot of people were expecting, including me, for him to be like the backup to Mackenzie Blackwood. Because I said in plenty of episodes during the course of the offseason, I said, barring anything catastrophic happening, I think Mackenzie Blackwood – remains the starting goalie for New Jersey Devils, and Vitek Vanacek is the backup. But it was a 1A, 1B kind of situation. And now, so going into the season, Vitek Vanacek, he struggled in his first game as a New Jersey Devil because I believe he made his debut against the Detroit Red Wings. And remember, we lost that game 5-2. So we were just – our the biggest X factor for New Jersey Devils going into the season was their goaltending. So that was what's going to make or break the Devils because their record could have been a lot more respectable last year had they had decent goaltending and, you know, they had to play musical chairs in that regards when, when it came to goalies. So it's just like that was the that was what was going to make or break us. And coming into the season, that's what was important. So Vitek Vanacek had a lot riding on his shoulders because we tried with Corey Crawford. That didn't work. We tried – with uh, Jonathan Bernier, that hasn't that hasn't worked so far. So it's just like third time's the charm of finding a decent backup goalie for Mackenzie Blackwood. And uh, Vitek Vanacek didn't really make a good first impression. But just a couple games later, we saw what Vitek Vanacek was capable of doing. And he performed above expectations. So the overall narrative for Vitek Vanacek was that he was basically given up, you know, very early by the Washington Capitals because they went and got um, – they got Darcy Kemper, and Darcy Kemper hasn't really been all that good. So I think it's been proven that he had a good unit in front of him while he was playing with the Stanley Cup uh, winners, the Colorado Avalanche. So I think those. So I think we got the better goalie in that regards because I said maybe the Devils could go after Darcy Kemper to help their goaltending. Glad we didn't. But uh, digressing a little bit, it's just like uh, the basically he was given up and 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 just shipped out for a couple draft picks and. Going into the season, no one had high expectations for him. He, they they were anywhere from low to moderate. He was able to exceed them. He was the reason why the New Jersey Devils, or one of the main reasons why the Devils went on a 13-game win streak. And he he is a fan favorite for right now. And he's come up big in clutch moments. And like I said, so going from just essentially being doubted, being – uh pegged as like Mackenzie Blackwood's backup to now being the starter to now being a vital uh, component to the roster for New Jersey Devils and basically surprising the hockey world because it's not just Vitek Vanacek it's the Devils as a whole no one has anticipated for them to be this good and at top of the standings uh, at this point in the year so that's my narrative for Vitek Vanacek which is the Devils are not in this situation without his services so that's a narrative. And like I said, this is a topic that I'm going to talk about as the season progresses, but I just wanted to get my feet wet. So let me know what you guys think. So I talked about his value. I talked about his statistics and I talked about his narrative, like what he has going for him. And like I said, if Vitek Vanacek were to hypothetically win the Vesna Trophy winner, I think it would be the most out of left field winner for the Vesna Trophy in a good while. And I think a fan also brought that to my attention as well. So just food for thought and uh let me know what you guys think in that regards okay so to close out this episode like we do uh for every post game recap let's look at the final statistics and i'll give you guys my overall letter grade so 
when looking at this game against the Chicago Blackhawks, obviously the Devils walked away with a 3 nothing victory, and they shut uh, out the Blackhawks for the first time since December of 1999. So shots on goal differential, 29-24 in favor of the Devils. Uh, their defense got better as the game progressed. Faceoff percentage, 52% to 48% in favor of the Blackhawks. Power play, Blackhawks were 0 for 3, and the Devils were 1 for 2 in their power play. It's worth mentioning that the Chicago Blackhawks, I believe they had, going into this game, they had three or four shorthanded goals, which actually leads the um, leads the NHL. So the fact that the New Jersey Devils, uh, despite being on the man-up advantage, were able to capitalize on a power play and not give the Chicago Blackhawks um, a, a shorthanded goal, they, they did have a defensive lapse at one point. But nonetheless, it's just like uh, I'm glad that the special teams stepped up once again. So penalty kill was good, and the power play, Devils were able to convert on a power play goal. Hits 13 to 7 in favor of the Blackhawks. Blocks 22 to 11 in favor of the Blackhawks. Giveaways, Devils led that department 12 to 6. So I'm not going to give the Devils an A despite getting the shutout. I'm actually going to give them a. I'm going to give them a B. I would have, if this was a normal game, I would have given them a B minus. What do I mean by normal game? Like, had this happened in the midst of our 13 game win streak, I would have just given them a B minus, but they've been showing improvement. And they've been showing that they're tightening it up a little bit. And I think they're starting to figure it out in the absence of Nathan Bastion. So that's my overall opinion about the game for Devils, which was solid. Nothing spectacular, but they've set the bar so high. So the grading is going to be a little more difficult for Devils. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Let me know what you think about uh, B-Tech Vanacek. Let me know what you think about our big three. And let me know what you think about our next matchup against the New York Islanders. I... Friday cannot get here sooner enough. I can't wait to be in the press box and cover the game. I don't know how I'm going to do it because I am a podcast host, so I, I, I'm i going to have to figure it out. But excited for the opportunity, guys. So uh, as for today's episode, that's all the time I have for you. So thanks for listening. Continue to stay safe. Have a wonderful day in New Jersey. Go Devils. Catch you guys in the next episode. Devils on a six-game point streak.